Taoiseach, I have raised on a number of occasions now, uh, since late 2017, the disgraceful treatment meted out to the hospices, the disability organisations and mental health services uh, by the government on a consistent basis, particularly in relation to the government's failure to restore their pay, the pay of their employees, in line with other health service employees. And from the outset, the government and indeed the Minister for Health has been dishonest on this issue. The hospices and the disability organisations are being treated as second class and their employees as second class citizens. They implemented FEMPI in 2010 and 2013 and were excluded deliberately by the government from the pay restoration public service agreements of the last two years. The government has stalled and stalled on this issue. And we all know that these organisations depend significantly on voluntary donations and fundraising out there in the community. They receive an average of about 75% of their total annual revenue operating costs from government. The rest they have to fund themselves and in, in particular almost have to raise all their own capital. They've had no increase in funding in recent years to meet increments and non-pay inflation. And since the early 2000s, the demand on their services has almost doubled. Now, in the context of our health services, hospices in particular are efficient, effective, have huge impact, have won the trust of the public, and yet they're being treated in a very cynical, dishonest and shabby manner um, by government. Why they were ever left out of the pay restoration uh, estimates and allocation is difficult to comprehend. But somewhere a cynical decision was taken to brazen this out. The goalposts keep changing, the story keeps changing. But essentially these organisations have been hung out um, to dry. Now, Tishik, I raised it with you in October of 2017, November 2017, January uh, of this year. You keep shifting the goalposts. This fundamentally is not an industrial relations issue. It is a funding issue. It is one of basic fairness. The hospices, the disability organisations have been shortchanged. They will simply have to cut services, Tishuk, and they've warned us about this if the pay restoration does not happen in line with other health service employees. So, Tishuk, I want to ask you, they're in a funding crisis right now. Can you confirm that funding has been allocated in the estimates for 2019 to facilitate pay restoration for the employees of hospices and the disability organisations and those covered by Section 39. And when is the government going to do the right thing in terms of treating these, the employees of these organisations in a fair and in a just manner? But your answer really reeks of dishonesty. And let's cut the verbiage, the waffle and all the talk and the average and all the rest of it. I met the five hospices yesterday. Bottom line is you haven't given them the money to restore pay. You haven't. The reason there was strike notice this week was because one hospice didn't pay. There's been no retrospection, there's been no pay. The Minister for Disability should be up in arms about this in terms of disability arguments. St. Joseph's and Charleville, I've met them. They're in debt, in a crisis. So let's cut all the nonsense, the waffle, because when the cuts happened, the HSC went down to each of these organisations, to the CEOs, and said, cut. If you don't, we cut your money. They're the only people in the health service that were excluded deliberately, cynically, from the pay restoration agreement. There's no rationale for it, Tisha. Now, we've got all of this. I got a similar reply to you. You mentioned St. Francis in every reply. I get fine. But the reality is you said the same thing over 12 months ago. You've been seeking information for about 15 months. Thank you, Deputy. The people love the hospices of this country, Tisha. They will do anything for them. Now, it's about time government did more than just sip a cup of coffee with them and a cup of tea and actually give what they're entitled to. The same as the nurses and all the other health alliance professionals working in other organisations in their health service. You know and I know they shouldn't even be Section 39 organisations. They should be fully integrated with our health service. And we should take lessons from them because they're the most trusted and well-received, the most popular services in our health service across the country. Thank you, Deputy.